Okay, um, here I have an email, I'll put my glasses back on, from a uh, student in Japan, uh, Yoshida Nagoya International School, and you've sent some questions, I believe a project you're working on. Um, your first question about how familiar I am or was with genocides and things like that. You know, before the Rwanda genocide, um, really, I, I studied Holocaust on a casual basis, really enjoyed biographies and reading about different people and, you know, people who resisted the French resistance and other places during that time. Um, but of course, since now, I've become very familiar and I'm reading like crazy to learn more uh, since our, our time there. So don't come at this from an academic background, just simply from uh, you know my personal experience and also, of course, what reading I've, I've been able to do. And then uh, the roles of the UN peacekeeping operations. Um, you know, b before the genocide, uh, there in Rwanda, I'll just speak to my experience in Rwanda. Before the genocide, I, I, I saw them as, um, sorry, we're here in New York City and taking off in just a couple hours for Kigali. Uh, before the genocide, I saw them as, you know, this buffer party, buffer role that they had between the two parties. And, and you saw them... Um, you know, being an actual presence and, and really bringing across kind of a sense of security to the people there, a huge sense, not only to the Rwandans, but also to um, to us foreigners who are in the country. So buffer really bringing a sense of security, I would, I would say there. Um, and they helped, yeah, they helped with communication between there. Kind of showing the, the international committees, just jotted a few notes, just uh, showing the international community's willingness to participate and to support. And so I saw them as, as really uh, demonstrating that. And then you ask about the term peace in my own words. I think, you know, peace, we kind of need to broaden it sometimes from just simply physical safety to actually social safety, economic safety. Um, I think all of those things need to be in place for genuine peace to, to take effect. Sorry, this is a little rushed, but we, we'll uh, hopefully you'll find something useful here. And then what do you think uh, is the peace that the UN peacekeeping offers? You know, what kind of peace do they do they speak of or work towards? I think theirs is probably, you know, primarily must be physical peace. The UN peacekeepers, that's, I think their primary role is, is this physical aspect of peace, absence of conflict, um, security in a country. What are your opinions on UNAMIR and do you consider the mission as a success or failure and why? Um, that's a lot more complex one. <laughs> to give a short answer is uh, not going to be easy. Um, I'll, I'll just speak to a couple of things again from our perspective on the ground we very much welcomed them when they came there um, and um, overall yeah a failure in that in that um, they provided a huge false sense of security for us there then when things exploded they simply left so people who may have um, made other plans you know plan uh, not that they all could have, but I had, a, I had a builder friend who sent his family out of the country, a Rwandan gentleman, because he sensed all the tension um, and, and his family was spared. Uh, many people, this false sense of security, I think, actually made things worse. So overall, yeah, the mission is a terrible, terrible failure. Having said that, the few men who stayed on the ground um, did heroic things. Those men, I think it's always important to differentiate between when we're talking UN, the people on the ground, or those who are organizing the mission in New York. And um, the people on the ground, heroic things, and, and very, you know, people alive today because those few men did stay in the country. But overall, yeah, a huge, tragic, tragic failure. Um, and uh, yeah, one other thing I had made a note earlier was that um, none of us knew that they were there armed with all of their guns and even a couple of tanks and stuff for their own protection, not for our protection. That was a big misleading thing for us to, to understand that as they were traveling around the city and patrolling with their machine guns and everything else, it was really just for their protection, not for our protection that that was hugely hugely misleading um yeah 
So, uh, then in general, do you think UN peacekeeping operations is efficient? What are the factors, reasons that make you think so? Um, yeah, I think it's pretty generally accepted. We're dealing with huge inefficiencies. Um, and uh, I, though, can't speak specifically, I think, to those from my experience on the ground, except for the way it played out on the ground, which kind of already referenced. And we see from other sources how those inefficiencies, I mean, just one specific that's pointed out in Ghost of Rwanda, or it's also Dallaire's book, Shake Hands with the Devil. Yeah, the contrast you see in Ghost of Rwanda between the support that the Red Cross got on the ground and the support that Dallaire did not get on the ground. And as you read his book, Shake Hands with the Devil, you see how he had to fight for every ream of photocopy paper. And so um, I suppose there is one inefficiency that I had to deal with. I had a truck that uh, I recovered from the Milkaline parking lot that had been stolen from the UN, and I got UN permission to use this pickup truck during the genocide. And then at the end of the genocide, I got a bill from the UN uh, for that truck. But um, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I guess uh, for me, uh, where I sit, my focus isn't so much on their inefficiencies as trying to bring forth the personal stories of those people who 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 did choose to stay there and then worked in very um innovative uh f what's what's the word i want to use resourceful ways to save lives and those individual people on the ground just uh, tons of admiration and appreciation for them I think I probably said that a couple times here. And uh, yeah, good luck on your project. Hope this is of some help. And please feel free to email uh, anytime in the future that I can, I can help in your project. Thanks. Take care.